Good afternoon, drafters and draft followers. We are on the uh, BRDL week one matches review. And yeah, we are on this pretty quick here. Uh, today is only Wednesday and all of the drafters have finished their matches. Seriously, guys, thank you. Uh, that makes it so much easier and um, reassuring that you guys are wanting to complete your matches and taking 20 minutes out of your day and your seven day week is not going to be it this seems to be an issue in a lot of drafts people are busy every minute second and a day of the week so um but anyways so we're going to be doing the match reviews um these aren't going to be super in depth because the issue is is like since i am watching these after the fact and not live i can't really um like commentate and like think about what they're thinking about too much because the, pa the, the pace of the replay is, I know I can change it here, but it's like not that slow. Um, I don't I don't get any time in between the turns here, so I'd have to keep pausing and shit, and I don't want to do that. It just, it would really uh, elongate the, the video here, and you know, you guys probably don't want me continuously pausing and shit like that, right? So, um, but yeah, so the first match here was uh, Scotty and Hassin. So Scotty being PKS Itchy Eyes and Hassin being Are You Sure It's Six Billion. So uh, a little bit of history here, just a teeny bit. I know Scotty performed in a group battle that we had. I think he performed like average, like I think he was even on his score. I can't remember, so correct me if I'm wrong. Apologies if I am. Uh, and then Hassin has, I believe, won one tournament. Uh, if not two, and come very close in a lot of tournaments that we've had at PBR. So uh, I was already quite aware of uh, his sin skill, which is, in my eyes, pretty pretty high. So uh, I did vote for his sin in this match, and uh, let let's see where this uh, takes us here. So okay, <laughs> I know I said I wouldn't pause it, but uh, I didn't uh, I didn't go over the match here, the actual details here. So. Uh, they obviously both brought the Charizard. Um, the first thing I'm seeing is Zura Aura just outspeeds everything, only really walled by Galurk, but Zura Aura getting knockoff is kind of an issue. Um, so in this match, I thought Mandibuzz was a huge issue for Hassin's team, um, especially uh, more or less the special defense Mandibuzz um, to deal with, you know, uh, Nine Tails. <clears throat> um, I think he had one other special attacker, but. Yeah, I really found Mandibuzz was going to be like a really, really hard point for Hassan to break through here. Um, I believe, yeah, Hassan is the one with Charizard X. So if he didn't set up Charizard X, Mandibuzz was just going to kind of wall him, which is what I felt. Any, uh, which is what I felt. Um, obviously, there's Toxic. Uh, you know, you can deal with it by Toxic. So uh, we'll see how it goes. The leads. Um, so I don't. I mean, I've seen the match already, but I always forget that Slurpuff gets sticky webs. Um, so if I didn't know that, which I wouldn't have before I seen the match, um, I would probably think if that's Choice Scarf Jirachi, Jirachi as the lead here, um, kind of a tough team to lead against. I don't really like leading Mandibuzz because Zoraor is always a good lead. And uh, you don't want to be too passive here, especially against a team like with, you know, Charizard X. Because if Mandibuzz led and Charizard X led and Mandibuzz didn't have Toxic, uh, he's probably dying. So, uh, if not getting, like, fully swept. So, uh, and on his Sin side, I don't know. I kind of like the uh, the Ninetales lead. It deals with Slurpuff. Um, it could kind of deal with Charizard. I mean, they would basically both Martyr. Uh, deals with uh, Jirachi, it deals with uh, Scizor, um, depending on the hidden power, could deal with Golurk and definitely do some damage to Manibus. So I really like the Ninetales lead here. Um, in any case, maybe the Zoraora, but yeah, no, I really like the Ninetales lead. So Scotty leads with Slurpuff. Um, as you can imagine, he's going to go with Sticky Web. So I don't really like the, the Mudsdale lead. Obviously, he's wanting the rocks here. Or he just goes straight for Heavy Slam, which is fine. Okay, yeah, so this, <laughs> that's a big issue. Um, that's a pretty cheeky set that Scotty has here. He gets the rocks up to secure the rocks. Um, obviously, there's Defog, though. So he gets the webs. This is really important because now uh, Jir Jirachi, Charizard, um, Mandibuzz. No, 
Mandibuzz won't. Um, Jirashi, Charizard uh, will outspeed the Zure Aura, so... He eventually gets the Rip Up Down uh, at the cost of his Muck, which I don't really like because Muck would have been a really good... Assault Vested Muck would have been good to deal with Charizard um, if it didn't have Scorching Sands. Dynamic Punch... You see what I mean? It's kind of hard to go over the match here because it's going so fast. Even it's on... We'll go really slow, see what happens. Yeah, so he gets a Golurk. Golurk, I don't know. I always think about drafting it, but I don't know really how to play it properly. So he gets in the... the I don't really... Yeah. Yeah, so the Sticky Webs is a huge issue right now. Um, this thing clearly did not bring any Defogger. Um... And yeah, I, I probably would have done, honestly, the same thing probably would have happened. I would have totally forgot that Slurpuff gets webs. And, uh, you know, his team's kind of falling apart to these webs right now since he's just getting outsped in both defensive departments and offensive departments. So I don't think, unless this is max speed go lurk, I don't think this will outspeed. I don't know if it will anyways. So Charizard X. Minus one, 218, yeah. So if that's max speed go lurk, this will out, also outspeed the, uh, If this is a jolly max speed go lurk, it will outspeed the Charizard, so. He ends up switching, I'm guessing in fear of that. I'm guessing that's, yeah, so he dynamic punches, so either he's kamikazing or he knows that he's faster than the Charizard now. Um, maybe Hassan will go into Zure Aura to knock off. Nope, just goes, sets up the sun. Okay. So, an interesting combo that I've used before is sun with Darmanitan, the Sheer Force Flare Blitz, basically one hit KOing even things that are resisted. Um, and I'm imagining that's what Sin's about to do right here. Um, potentially bringing the match back in his favor since Charizard X is pretty bulky. He should be able to get off a couple and those couples should one hit KO. Uh, he doesn't really have anything here that's going to eat. Um, a sun boosted Flare Blitz, maybe the Mandibuzz. Oh, I'm surprised that I'm surprised that didn't even kill. Oh my god. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder if he had the weakness policy for a dark move, um, like you know, uh, Muck. But see, the stored power wouldn't even work because Muck was dark anyway. So I'm interesting. I'm interested to know why he, why he's using this set and what it was actually used for, or if it's just a random bring. Um, Oh, <laughs> see, this is what I forgot about when I was talking with uh, another player, Calvin, is I totally forgot flying types bypass sticky webs, and, and I knew they bypass spikes, but I totally forgot they bypass sticky webs, so this doesn't even matter. So this is really good for Hassan right now. Uh, he's got Sun on, and he's got Flare Bloods coming, so, uh, and he's going to speed tie with this Jirachi. So he gets the speed tie. Really unfortunate for uh, Scotty here because he basically could have won the game uh, had he got that. Now he's in really big trouble. Um, he doesn't have anything that's going to outspeed this except speed tie with Charizard Charizard Y here. Um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, this will one hit KO now. It should um, since he just got rock damage. Okay, yeah, that's that's heavy defense invested Mandibuzz. Definitely not specially defensive. Yeah, if, if Hassan calc there, I probably would have just Dragon Danced. I don't know if Hassan calc there or not. If he had calc there though, that definitely would have been really in his favor. Because he would have been able to Dragon Dance and then he would have been able to probably win. Yeah, 
yeah, so now no more Sun Boost, no Dragon Dance up. Um, Golurk might have enough chip on it. Does have enough chip on it, but he's gonna die from Flare Blitz here pretty soon. <clears throat> oh yeah, so Scissor just comes in and Bullet Punches. Pre pretty easy here. So Zuriar is going to come in, be extra slow. Um, Scizor probably just U-turns right into Charizard Y. Um, yeah, already bullet punches. Oh, it might be Bandit, that's why. Yeah, so if that was Banded, that's probably why. But if it wasn't, Scotty could have saved some differential here and went to U-turn and then Charizard. But that's probably Banded. That bull punched it a lot. It's a really close match, even though Webbs was so bad for his in here. Um, yeah, not 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 too much to to hit on his in. Um, I'm imagining he probably forgot Slurpuff gets Sticky Webbs. Uh, just a wild Pokemon to have webs in general, so um, I probably would have. I probably would have forgot myself. I forget all the time. Um, but yeah, webs was a huge issue. I'm pretty sure Hassan has a defogger on his team. Um, yeah, I definitely would have had a defogger just in case. I mean, that that's something you should normally bring, uh, just in case. Like always, a fallback procedure. Um, but. Hands off, uh, hats off to Scotty here. He really, really uh, pulled off a great win there. Um, even though he only got a 1-0 differential, which is good for Hassan. He only lost by one point, so he's minus one. Um, good for Scotty, he got the win, but he only got plus one, so he could easily drop down. Uh, but yeah, he brought a good team. He knew what he wanted to do, the sticky webs. He knew that was going to be important against uh, Hassan's team, who had faster threats. Um, yeah. Not much more I can say about that match. That's off to Scotty. Uh, but we'll move on to the second match here. So we have um, Jace versus Phil. So this was my most anticipated match that I wanted to see. And the reason why, so I thought about it some more. I'm gonna change my wording a little bit, okay? Um, I'm gonna adjust it slightly. Rain has per has not performed as good as it does on the ladder. Okay, so in my in my um, uh, introduction, I was saying Rain is notoriously bad in draft. Um, Rain is Rain notoriously doesn't do as good as you think it do in draft. Um, that's how I'd word it. So I was very interested to see um, since I know Jace's caliber of skill, I'm very interested to see how he does. Uh, with rain so this is this is the thing um in the last draft that i was in rain like didn't do bad it just like the guy that had rain didn't i, I can't, i'm pretty sure he didn't make it into playoffs he barely didn't make it into playoffs um and so it's not like he performed bad it just like on ladder range is so good you know so it's um yeah i won't elaborate too much but yeah so in this match, uh, I thought Buzzwool was extremely important in this match to dealing with Mega Swampert. <clears throat> um, obviously, he's got Zapdos and Pelipper to deal with Buzzwool, but yeah, Buzzwool is really good here for Swampert and Kartana. Um, I mean, it, it deals with both of them. So uh, and then he's got the Mega Sceptile here, which is going to be able to deal with Swampert. It's going to be able to. Um, uh, deal with the Kartana as well with Hidden Power Fire. And then you got Volcanion to deal with Kartana. Um, you know, the uh, Special Defense Gliscor, I think, uh, could have been really good here too with the uh, Zapdos. I mean, Hidden Power Eye is still a problem. Um, Pelipper obviously still going to hit it with Weather Ball. Um, but it would have been able to deal with the Clefable as well. So, uh, but yeah, let's let's see where it goes. Oh yeah, uh, fun fact. I, I was... I was ragging on Jace pretty hard about this Murkrow, so uh, I imagine he needed to rub it in my face by bringing it. So let, let's see how it goes. Uh, okay. So Shuckle, um, pretty typical. Uh, every every player that drafts Shuckle uses Shuckle first. Mental Herb, Encore, pretty annoying. So 
Uh, he leads with Murkrow. Uh, Murkrow's got Prankster. Obviously, he's just gonna, you know, he's gonna ride out this Prankster, use it as much as he can. Uh, but let's see what he does here. So, Mean Look traps it. Sticky webs. Yeah, so it's okay. Sticky web here is important because rain. Getting that double speed on the Mega Swampert, it's gonna really slow it down. Mega Swampert's bulky enough to take attacks, but generally you, you want Mega Swampert to just be able to sweep and not have to worry about it. So a little bit annoying for Jace here. He definitely knows he needs to get the webs off the field like uh, before he starts going on offense. Um, but yeah, Zapdos and Pelipper aren't gonna aren't gonna do, um, care about it too much. But Kartana and Mega Swampert really don't like these webs up. Um, it really deters them from sweeping or even getting on the field. So. Taunt. Mental Herb, Classic, Shuckle. So, okay. This is this is something that I definitely would have... Um, in my lineup here, when I'm seeing Jace's team and he's got Murko, um, something I would have thought of is Murko leading, just because Prankster. Uh, I probably would have led something a little bit more offensive just to get rid of this. Um, now, he's got, a sh it didn't matter because he has Mental Herb on Shuffle and he's got both webs and rocks up, so not a big deal, but um, it, yeah, no, the, the webs is pretty important. I guess, I guess leading the Shuffle and just getting the webs up as fast as possible, it puts Jace in a defensive position now, so um, let's, let, let's carry on here. Aunt, do anything. Final Gambit. I, I didn't even, you know, I don't look into the Shuckle too much, but I didn't even know it learned Final Gambit until I seen this match. <laughs> Probably took Chase off my guard. But yeah, Murko's gonna die here for sure. So he has Mean Look Taunt, what else does he have? Toxic. So I'm curious. When you have a Pokemon like Murkrow, that has Prankster, I don't know what the point value differences were, but, like, why not draft Sableye? Does Murkrow get, I guess Murkrow gets, I think Murkrow gets Haze. Mur Murkrow gets a few other options, I guess. Um, and, and the ability to run Eviolite, I don't know. So Murko, Murko gets KO'd here, uh, it, does what it, it does what it needed to do, it took out Chuckle, um, which is good. I got the Toxic on the Mega Sceptile, which is going to make sure uh, Phil doesn't just be abusing the Sceptile here. Obviously, Defog is coming. Um, I wouldn't risk Sceptile. This is a good switch. He goes into Metagross. Um, so here, here's the thing here. Uh, you clearly know he's going for Defog. He needs to get the webs off the field. He doesn't care about the rocks, really. He just needs to get the webs off the field. Um, I really think Phil needed to go into something seriously offensive here, so um, like like if this is set up Metagross, this would have been good. They defogs away, which we thought <clears throat> was Metagross too. And have but. Uh, Gonna do absolutely do it. See, that would that wouldn't have done much to Zapdos either. So I, I'm not sure how I feel about that play. Upper comes in, sets up the rain. Now, now Jace, he's set up the rain. He's forced Metagross into a switch. I mean, this is an easy U-turn right into Mega Swampert and like you know start doing some damage. U-turn. Volcanion comes out. Now Volcanion's good, you know, uh, with the Water Absorb. Pelipper's going to use Weather Ball or Liquidation from Bomper. Um, also good to catch the Kartana with Fire Blast. Can uh, resist Clefable as well. Yeah, so the Mega Swampert comes in, clearly. Um, so Buzzwool should be coming out now. See, now if the webs were up... Hidden Power Grass, Volcanium would be able to deal with the, with the Mega Swamper. But yeah, Buzzwool's going to have to come out. So, <clears throat> Phil's got to play extremely critical here um, in saving his Buzzwool. He does not want this Toxic. He does not want a lot of damage on it. He purely needs this to be used for Mega Swamper um, and Kartana. Um, 
the thing is, I don't know what moveset this Buzzwool has, um, but Toxic would have been good for the Mega Swampert. Notch, I guess, um, Drain Punch for the Kartana, but I mean, Kartana's just gonna set up or something, right? So, but yeah, let, let's, let's keep. Okay. Megas. Hmm. You know, I totally forgot about that. I knew Swampert has flip turn, but I wasn't even thinking that. Mega Swampert with flip turn is pretty good. Um, that'd be pretty nice. It allows him to not have to hard switch and he can get really good chip off. So you see how much that did. I'm curious if that was fully invested defensive. So buzz wall. Physical wall. So either that was max roll, or that was not very, not full defense. Because if that was full defense, that flip turn only would have done max 26, so. Zapdos comes out, obviously, like I told you guys at the beginning, Zapdos and Pelipper are going to be able to deal with this Buzzwool. I wonder if this is a salt vest of Metacross. <laughs> Kartana? Well, that was a hard switch, I think. Yeah, that was a hard switch. Really aggressive play by Jacer. I guess he, he wants to, he wants to get he wants to seal the deal. So Kartana obviously has knockoff here. Uh, then he would be able to get beast boost. So okay, generally that's a good play. Um, switching into Buzzwool. Uh, that was a really aggressive prediction that uh, Jace did. So I don't know what Metagross had uh, in terms of moves. Obviously it didn't have something to deal with Kartana, but um, I almost think that <laughs> Yeah, no, he he probably needs to save Metagross for Zapdos, and um, no, because, yeah, no, he probably needs it for Zapdos, because Hurricane. I was going to say um, Sceptile would be okay for it, uh, but Hurricane, yeah. He, yeah, he, he was in a little bit of a pickle there, um, but I don't know, like, letting Kartana set up, I, I might have just attacked it and tried to deal with Zapdos and Pelipper in another way. I guess Metagross was his answer to Clefable too. A tough call here. Really, yeah. Sorry, I'm, sorry, I keep pausing. Just really tough call for Phil here. Really, really great predictions by Jace though. Yeah, so he sets up Sword Stance. I imagine this is probably game. I mean, that's 460 attack plus two. I mean, that's 900. 900. Then he just yeah, Supersonic Sky Strike, uh, which is I guess the acrobatics or something like that z move now he's got three times yeah this this is for sure game um i don't i don't see him being able to do this now he'll just knock off you yeah, have knock off and iron blade or uh <laughs> knock off and leaf blade or knock off and iron head yeah so now he's yeah this, this big, you know, it's three times. This is big, bad. So 348 speed, all he's got is Sceptile to outspeed this. Wait. Why wouldn't he just go into Sceptile then? So, okay. Mega Sceptile. I don't, I don't know what his, um, his, his coverage was on Mega Sceptile, but we go to... Because Kartana has terrible... Terrible special defense. It's 31. Okay, yeah. So Kartana had 78% health left. 
Yeah, none of these do enough. If he had HP fire, which I imagine he would have, it would have killed even in the rain. So. Hmm. Yeah, so gets the the kill the four times and uh yeah that's bill forfeits um fair enough i mean that he knows that's game he probably doesn't want to stick around too long too much longer i mean in this case uh when we have a really finicky dock i probably would have just stuck it out it's a pretty quick match um he's just gonna click attacks and the pokemon are gonna be ko'd um i get it i've quit matches too um but i've also quit matches that are like somebody like 100 has the win and they're toxic stalling me like just attack me i i've already given given up you know things like that that's when that's when i would kind of be like yeah i, I get it i even get it in this situation you're probably mad cartana comes in it's beast boosting nobody really likes that right but hats off to jace here um i know jace likes his zapdos so i knew he was going to be able to utilize it well um but he really utilized the rain well um i mean he didn't even really like do anything too crazy i mean it was just really threatening um the mega swampert he you know he was being being able to switch between his pokemon uh they all really um uh, uh coincided combined really well so uh, yeah just it, it was a hard a tough situation for phil he didn't really have um so okay yeah I'm trying to figure out how to explain this to you guys so like for example when i was explaining jeremy's team and i said okay fairy can cover three types of things on jeremy team. so with jace's team it's like it's so spread out it's diverse it's hard to cover everything so like when i was saying about the metagross play like it was kind of a really really pickle situation for for phil here because he kind of needed metagross to deal with clefable and to uh deal with clefable offensively um, and deal with Zapdos and Pelipper defensively. I'm assuming if that's Salt Vested. Um, he didn't have anything else to really cover those Pokemon. I mean, Volcanion could probably deal with the Clefable, um, depending what the set is. Um, but like, yeah, maybe he could have dealt with the, the Zapdos, but the problem was is Volcanion's best, you know, stab move against the Zapdos and Clefable is hindered by the rain. So he was in a really tough spot. Um, Jace has a really well-built team, so uh, I'm very curious to see how this goes throughout the draft. But yeah, I, I, I won't. I won't go. Sorry, this is just my most anticipated match. I really wanted to see how Rain did, uh, so I was very, very excited to see how this how this match went. Um, but no, sorry. Before we head off, no, um, no, no ill will to Phil here. Uh, you know, I get it, forfeiting, um, but just come back stronger, man. Like you know. You didn't build, I don't think you built anything really wrong. You you had the right idea, you got the webs up. It was just about keeping the pressure um, and probably not uh, suiciding your shuckle. I think the webs were really important to making sure Jace didn't come on the offense. So uh, maybe next time you could, you could circle around that shuckle a little bit more. So uh, the third match of the week here, we have uh, Lucas and Jared. I did catch half this match live. Um, so <clears throat> I did a lot of talking to Jared and Lucas uh, before their match. So uh, I kind of knew what both of them were planning to do. And, you know, Jared, uh, like I said in, in the introduction, Jared's team really just wants to attack. It just needs to attack. Um, and Lucas's team, it, it's, it has a passive side to it and it has an unpredictability side to it. Um, but Lucas's name in the game here is not letting... Um, Jared get in the driver's seat. So Lucas has got to take the offense to him very quickly and he's got to keep that offense up and he's got to, you know, basically play chicken with Jared, you know, uh, you know, like just keep attacking, you know, who's, who's gonna, who's gonna really kamikaze here, right? So Jared leads off with Crawdon. So like I was saying, he, he just really needs to, um, yeah, J Jared was really trying to get that offense started very quickly. So he leads Crawdon. Um, a little bit strange considering Crawdon is um, slower than Nidoking here. Um, so Thunderbolt would have killed Crawdon. Uh, Mineshell was going to be able to deal with Crawdon. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Klefki would have been able to deal with Crawdon. So a little bit weird, the Crawdon lead. I probably would have led with something more like Meowstic. Get your screens up right away. Um, maybe maybe Martyr the Meowstic and go in offensively. Uh, potentially lead the Dragonite. Um, but I definitely think not the Crawdon. 
So, um, yeah, so with that in mind, he, he clearly knows that Lucas needs to be offensive to make sure that Jared's not offensive. So, uh, yeah, the Crawdon, um, a little bit weird. And then, you know, a little bit weirder, he switches into the Ferrothorn, which is really, um, really interesting because he needs Ferrothorn for Greninja, um, Klefki, and uh, Mew. Depending what the Mew set is, uh, he like he really needs this Ferrothorn, especially if he's going to be in the passenger seat of this match. Um, he really, really needs to keep the Ferrothorn. Um, he had a number of options to switch into, uh, namely that Mawile with Intimidate. He could have easily started setting up in the game, get that Intimidate off on the Mind Shell, and then uh, and then set up a Sword Stance on the Switch probably, uh, and then just you know wall break from there since he has three other sweepers to uh, to, to to manage the game here. So. Um, or, or, you know, even if this is a, a bulkier, uh, Volcarona, bulkier Quiver set, which is a really good set on Volcarona, uh, he could have switched in with the Flame Body and potentially got a burn on this Mind Shao, uh, or at least pressured it, right? So, yeah, he switches in the Ferrothorn. Let's see what Lucas does. All right. All right. Richard, Norman, see that? High Jump Kick miss. This is why High Jump Kick sucks. He just missed and he took 50% for clicking a move that has high accuracy. This is why close combat is so much better. So that's why that's why Mega Metacham is is not the same as Glade on, on my list anyway. That's poo poo. Poo poo. Not to mention he just clicks protect again and he mind show dies. <laughs> so anyways. Anyways. So he just, yeah, he immediately sacks the, the Ferrothorn here. I'm a little bit confused about that. And yeah. <clears throat> Don't know what the Ferrothorn set was here, but a little bit confused that he's sacking Ferrothorn. And then on top of top of it all, he clicks knockoff. When Gyro Ball just would have killed. So um, I get knockoff. Maybe he was thinking there was going to be a switch, but I mean... In Lucas's position, if you were in Lucas's position, you'd just kill the Ferrothorn. And knowing how important Ferrothorn is to uh, to stopping your your team, uh, I probably would have just you know tried to high jump kick again. But yeah, so he knocks off. Um, Lucas's mind shell survives, which regenerator. This is going to be good for Lucas. Um, he switches into Moltres uh, to effectively deal with this Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn's desperately trying to set up rocks here. He sets the mystical fire, gets the rocks up. Lucas is either forced to deal with uh, the rocks by defogging and probably losing the Moltres to Crawdon here. So Crawdon goes for a Swords Dance. Yeah, so he loses the loses the Crawdon. Thank goodness he didn't get air slash. So this is life orb crowd on. So life orb. So Lucas brings in uh, mind shell, gets a little bit of health back, and gets the Fago, gets a little bit more chip, goes into Klefki. Holy sh! Isa, that Aqua Jet did a lot of fucking damage. My goodness. Wow, that would have that would have killed Mancho for sure. Um. Okay, so looking here. Now that I'm looking, um, he doesn't have really anything to deal with this Nitto King. Um. So that Aqua Jet, that adaptability Aqua Jet might have been important for later in the match. I might have saved the Crawdon here since it had Aqua Jet um, to, to just just deter Lucas a little bit from just like getting click happy with Nidoking. Um, but Lucas has regenerated a lot of health with Mind Shell, almost full again. Now the Reflex up, so uh, Jared loses um, the, the, uh, the Crawdon here. Yas that comes in, hopefully sets up screens. Okay, yeah, so Lucas very prepared. He has Taunt on Mind Shao. Um, he's able to make sure light screen doesn't go up. Greninja comes in. 
Okay, so interesting there. Greninja came in. And then Dragonite came in. Lucas switched out Greninja. Hmm. I don't know why he didn't Ice Beam. The Dragonite comes in behind screens. He switches out Dragonite in fear of the Ice Beam, I guess. Meowstic comes back in for the light screen. Oh. My least favorite move in draft. Least favorite move in draft. Subs. Um, anyways, Lucas gets behind sub here. This is really, really bad for um, uh, Jared right now. Um, so he, he opts to save the Meowstic here. Um, and he hard switches into Dragonite. Um, with Nidoking behind sub, I don't know if I would have switched into the Dragonite, even behind screens. Oh, and then he just gets, he gets predicted. Um, so Lucas, obviously, he Earth Powered the first time against the Meowstic. Um, Jared clearly thought he was going to Earth Power or maybe even Sludge Bomb. Uh, instead, Lucas goes for an Ice Beam, uh, predicting uh, some sort of switch, obviously the Dragonite switch, and he gets a crit, of all things, uh, which KOs the Dragonite behind screens with Marvel Scale, so, or Multi Scale. So, uh, I did a calc on this, uh, without the crit, that Ice Beam would have done, I think it was 36 to 42, with the crit it does, uh, 100 to 115, so, pretty wild. Uh, Jared's in a really, really tough spot here, Nidal King's behind a, a sub and a screen, so, uh, really, really tough, tough place right now. Basically what he can do, since he has his own screens, is hopefully go into Volcarona and set up a shit ton of Quiver Dances and potentially sweep, so uh, let's see what he does. Volcarona, this is the right play. Quiver Dance. Right. Okay. This should do a lot of damage if not KO Mew. Okay, Sash. New stone edges. Okay. It doesn't kill the Volcarona. He's got that reflect up. Reflect wears off. He's gotta probably attack here. Yeah, he's gonna come in and fake out. Yeah. Dang, that was that was that had to be a fully invested attack, Mew. Uh, that is a shit ton of damage. Um I wonder if that was uh oh. Sorry, I just wanna see. I want to see if this was a bulky Volcarona, if this would have helped him survive. Oh. 68 to 80, how much did that do? Oh, oh. 68 to 80. Um, where's that stone? So it did 85, so this wasn't a bulky Volcarona. Um, if this was a bulky set Volcarona, uh, might have survived. So, mind you. Oops, not mine, too. seeing if it was a bulky Volcarona, if the, the um, if the fake out would have killed too, so nope, Jared's in a really tough position here, uh, he loses, he, whoops, he loses the Volcarona to fake out, Mind Chow's in, Mawile comes in, no Intimidate, which is really, uh, really unfortunate for Jared here, if he had the intim Intimidate, uh, it could have forced the Mind Chow to switch, or try and attack, uh, Mawile here with sh with Poo Poo Attack. Um, so if we do a quick calc here, Mega Mawile and Mind Shell. So. High Jump Kick and minus one attack. Okay, so High Jump Kick still does quite a bit of damage, 43 to 51, even with minus one attack. Um, 
but what would have happened is he would have survived uh, and he would have been able to get a swords dance off. So he has taunt on mind shout too. So Lucas is really prepared. He did a really good job prepping in this match. Um, he had two taunt users, I believe. Hmm. I only see one. I thought he had two. But the taunt on mind shout has been really good. I mean, it's really doing work here. So yeah, he taunts the Mawile. Mawile falls for the taunt, can't Swords Dance, so uh, w what should happen right now is Jared should just be clicking Play Rough since it's going to smash everything, um, even, even Nidoking King here. Okay, so he he goes Sucker Punch for some reason, I don't I don't know why. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay. yeah. So he goes Sucker Punch, um, if he had Play Rough... That would have been the play here. Uh, he just clicks play rough. He would have one hit KO the the mind shell. Um, then he would have been able to probably potentially squeeze out a win, um, depending if uh, Meowstic could come in and set up a screen, uh, since light screen would have been good. Meowstic comes in. Obviously, Meowstic not really offensively adept here. Uh, not going to be able to set up too much. Uh, Jared's kind of you know. He knows he's he's probably done here, so gets the protein. Lucas pulls out a win here. Pretty close match. Um, I really what the what I think this came down to more than more than anything is Lucas did come really prepared with these taunts, which I think were really really good. Um, but every time Jared had. Uh, the ability to uh, take a lead from him. Uh, he made a little bit of uh, some awkward plays, um, you know, namely the no intimidate on the Mawile and no, and uh, I don't know if he had play rough or not, um, but no, didn't play rough on the mind show. Uh, he, you know, he kind of kicked himself in the pants or punched himself in the pants in, in those couple plays. And I think those truly is what costed him the match here. Um, but uh, no takeaway from Lucas. He prepped really well for this game. Uh, bringing a taunt on Mind Shell, really, really utilizing Regenerator. I mean, at one point, Mind Shell was like 20% health, and it comes back into the game at 100% health, you know, deep into the game, you know, right? So, really good match. Uh, really, really good match by these two guys. Next up, we have uh, Norman and Grim. So, Grim being Aphromari, and Norman being. I uh, don't know how to pronounce that, so, uh, yeah, don't know what it means either, so I'm just going to say Norman is the guy with the name that says Yag in it. Um, but yeah, so Norman was one of the only guys here that drafted like a really small team, but sh like strictly OU Pokemon, so I think he has only eight Pokemon, um, but mind you, they're all really strong eight, so... Uh, and then Grim drafted a really good team too with Victini and Lele. I think is ridiculously strong uh, two Pokemon. So uh, yeah, in the leads here, let's see. I think Rillaboom's the best lead here. It deals with maybe not. Endo. I like the Rillaboom lead because it deals with T-Tar, Chansey, uh, can just U-turn on the Skarmory, deals with Rotom, uh, can deal with, uh, oh, can't deal with Lele because Lele deals with priority moves. Maybe Lando or Azumarill. Azumarill would deal with T-Tar, Pini, Chansey, not Skarmory, not Rotom Wash, uh, probably not Lele. I don't know. Maybe maybe the the Torrenty. he can scout U turn knock off. Let's see let's see. What Goes with Lando typical. That's you know most Lando teams do they just leave Lando. Okay so he's, I've never seen this. But I think gravity I think what gravity does is it it uh, pumps the accuracy up. But yeah so special attack. So is this a special attack one maybe? Because the burn would have been really bad here. Yeah, so special attack line up. Grim just goes into Chansey here. Switches out Venusaur. Alright. 
toxic, Venusaur being annoying like he is, uh, really hard to uh, take that Pokemon out. Looking for a Defog, I'm assuming. Sorry, I'm just... I don't know, went two days there. Uh, okay, so yeah, the Rillaboom is able to switch the terrain on the on the Lele here, which is really good. Um, it kind of slows down Grimm's offense a little bit, uh, but Rillaboom's really not liking this Skarmory, especially if it's got Rocky Helm. I, I didn't quite see that. Yeah, it does. So uh, Rillaboom really doesn't like attacking the Skarmory. Doesn't like attacking in general because uh, you know it could potentially just keep getting chipped by the Skarmory. So Norman's having a really tough time with the Skarmory right now. He doesn't have too much answers to it. Um, this Calm Mining Landorus could be uh, what his answer to Skarmory is. But yeah, so Venusaur comes in. Venusaur is just being extra annoying, absorbing attacks. So right now, I think what's happening is Norman is, is really accumulating a lot of chip. These rocks are doing a lot of damage right now. Um, and he's making a lot of switches without being offensive. Grim must just be loving this because that Victini sitting in the back, that Lele sitting in the back, just waiting to clean up. So, um, yeah, Grim's doing a really good job of keeping pressure up and forcing Norman to switch and uh, collectively um, add up that rock damage. So he gets in Hoopa. Uh, this might be where the match changes. Hoopa's ridiculously strong, so. But this Skarmory is a massive problem if he doesn't have Fire Punch yet, so... It, it really looks like Norman do, doesn't have any answers to this Skarmory. Whirlpool. Okay. Whirlwind. Just, yeah, expertly built Skarmory here. <laughs> expertly played right now. It's just... It's carrying his team right now, you know. Um, Norman has nothing for this Skarmory is what it looks like right now. Like, Skarmory, in my opinion, Skarmory's done all this damage right now. 82 on Azumarill, 76 on Tornadus, 46 on Landorus, uh, 51 on Venusaur, 64 on Hoopa. Like, at this point, it basically, uh, Specs Lele comes in and just obliterates the rest of this team if he doesn't have Scarf on Hoopa. So, um, I mean, Tornadus, yeah, Tornadus won't even be able to kill it, so... Yeah, at this point, it's pr pretty tough match for for Norman to come back on. I because if if he doesn't, it looks like he doesn't have anything for the Skarmory. And if Grim keeps playing the Skarmory the way he's playing it, um, really really hard match for Norman to crawl back from. Venusaur comes out. He probably needs to recover. Giga Drain. Okay, Worry Seed, very interesting. I don't know what the Worry Seed is. I guess... Toxic on the Chansey. Worry Seed, Toxic. Not bad, that's not a bad combo. But I don't know if that works on because Natural Cure is on the switch, switch out or switch in. Um, I'm not sure how that mechanic works, actually. Okay, so Lele comes in. Um, Grim's looking to end it right here, uh, obviously, since uh, he can just Psychic on the uh, the Venusaur or force the uh, force the Hoopa to come in uh, on the Psychic and, you know, potentially go for a Moonblast. Very curious. Um, not sure what he's going to do here. Take a drink. Oh. Okay, yeah, he came in on the, on the turn. Okay, that's why. I was like, the Venusaur's fast or something. So, uh, this mustn't mustn't be Specs um, Lele, because if that was Specs, I believe that would have killed. Okay, so this isn't Life Orb. This clearly isn't Specs. Oh, I was thinking Choice Scarf. But 
then he switches out on the Lele. Switches out when Hoopa's in. He just Moonblasts again. Uh, maybe Hoopa Scarfed? Maybe that's what he's worried about and he's not Scarfed? Charmin comes in again. Thank goodness he, he knocked off that Rocky Helm. I mean, he would have probably lost to the Rocky Helm already if it was still on that Skarmory. So he's going for this Gravity again. Oh, okay. Gravity does that too. So I, sorry, I don't I don't know the, the like the mechanics of that. I just I rarely see it. So uh, really really innovative by Norman here. Really cool to see that. Um, Grim definitely, definitely didn't expect that or didn't know either, so. Uh, wild play there, that was awesome. This is, if that Landorus had a little bit more health, this could be a really good turning point for Norman. Um, we've yet to see if it has hidden power as well, so. Yeah, he just Hydro Pumps, gets that Lando down. Uh, again, this is really hard to come back from, especially with Chansey of full health. Bulk up. Toxic. Okay, these are really interesting sets by Norman here, and they're working. So, the only thing is, these are good sets, don't get me wrong. I might have saved these for later in the draft, um, but I guess Grimm's a really hard matchup for him, so maybe he had to utilize them. But really, really spectacular sets by Norman here. Really like that gravity. Jesus, that did nothing. That did nothing to the Victini. What the heck? Oh my god. Yeah, so I already knew the I already knew the outcome. Um, so right here, Grim Omni boosts. Uh, that's that's banned in our draft. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's a pretty unbalanced uh, mechanic here. So uh, Grim's immediately DQ'd for this. Um, later on, um, Grim would later leave uh, the draft altogether. Um, thankfully, uh, Steven uh, came and immediately picked up uh, his spot and uh, we had him redraft his team uh, in thanks for coming in so quickly. So uh, Grim's spot is already filled thanks to Steven. Um, I don't know I don't know why Grim, we talked about this beforehand that you can't Omni boost and he was winning. So I, I don't understand. Um, it's unfortunate. He built a pretty good team, and uh, he was really he was looking really crisp against Norman, who's not an easy battle or reverse either. So, anyways, what happens in this situation is Norman will get the win here. Um, he gets he gets the three zero. Um, so that's a win for Norman. Uh, he he got away by the skin of his teeth. Uh, he thanks. Thankfully, gets a gets a little bit of a running start this season. Uh, gift of the gods here. So, uh, not to say like he 100% lost that matchup, um, but it was it was heavily in Grimm's favor. I mean, Lele was still alive, Rotom was still alive, Victini was coming at full health, Tyranitar is at full health, uh, and he had no answers for this Skarmory unless he had maybe Fire Punch on. Um, on Hoopa, so who knows? Uh, but really, really uh, expertly uh, built sets with uh, such a small condensed team, Norman. Uh, and then Grim just Grim played really well. It's unfortunate that he, uh, I guess, I don't know, got upset and left. But yeah, um, <clears throat> we have our next match here. I'm gonna try and speed these up a little bit. Uh, we're already at like almost an hour. Um, I'll try not to, you know, like, speed up and, like, you know, cram the rest of these matches in, like, you know, and not not give a fair example of, like I did with the other matches, but at the same time, obviously, everybody's not going to watch every single match, so um, making a one and a half hour long video, I don't know, so uh, we have Jeremy here uh, with All Fire Up and um, John on RK Bro here. So, uh, John's team, a <laughs> lot of fire weakness on it right now. We got Lucario weak to fire, Cobalion weak to fire, 
uh, Mel Metal weak to fire, Scissor weak to fire. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of fire weakness. So, uh, Jeremy's probably looking at this and just like, Arcanine's fucking gonna do some serious work here. Um, yeah, this, this is gonna be crazy. So, for the leads, um, I don't know what I would do for leads on John's team. He's just got so much fire weakness. Um, maybe lead Meloetta, Scout, um, U-Turn. Um, depending what Necrozma is, Necrozma could be a lead, but with all this fire weakness, I imagine this should be a, a setup, um, since it should be a win con. But, um, yeah, on Jeremy's side, I don't know. Jeremy can kind of lead whatever he wants. Garchomp's gonna super effective Earthquake, super effective Earthquake on Cobalion, super effective Earthquake on Melmetal, on Lucario. Um, potentially as flamethrower for Scizor, like <laughs> flamethrower on Hydreigon is gonna hit four people, like Dark Pulse for yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So he leads Galvantula, like I was saying in his in his um, analysis, he wants webs, he wants to attack. Um, this is gonna be the the name of his strategy about every single game. I don't want to exaggerate too much, but like for a lot of his games, uh, he he wants those webs up right away. Um, did did he really need the webs? Not really. I mean, Meloetta, yeah. I mean, Meloetta per uh, pure ready. I don't know how to I don't know how to pronounce the other form of Meloetta, but that one I think has 346 speed. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. His team outspeeds everything, anyways. Um, but I guess uh, the sticky webs for insurance. Yeah, so he's gonna probably martyr the Galvantula. Oh, he switches out Galvantula, goes into Arcanine. Melmetal still has a decent amount of damage, probably minus one attack. Yeah, Arcanine has the flamethrower. Jeremy's very aware that he had a lot of fire weakness. Flamethrower is gets rid of the Melmetal, which uh, was a pretty annoying Pokemon to deal with since double Iron Bash just fucking hurts everything. Necrozma comes in. Yep, Hydreigon comes out. Uh, cause Photon guys are psychic and Hydreigon's just gonna be able to immune it. Um, pfft, gets the crit. Um, I mean, I think it would've, I think he would've been able to deal with it anyways. Necrozma doesn't have super reliable recovery, has Moonlight, but Dark Pulse would've been able to 2 hit KO. So Hydreigon comes in, Hydreigon kills the Necrozma, Scizor comes in. Um, you know, uh, threatening the U-turn or bullet punch. Um, so, but if Hydreigon had Flamethrower, I mean, I probably just would have stayed in since you would have outsped the Scissor's U-turn and potentially one hit killed Flamethrower. So uh, he goes into Arcanine for the uh, minus minus attack, uh, I guess as a safety precaution. Scissor Iron Defenses, um, so that, that minus attack, not the biggest deal. Uh, he Flamethrowers, I mean, like I said, he's got so many fire weakness here, he's just gonna, Arcanine's just gonna run amok. Yeah. Yeah, so, here it goes, Arcanine going crazy. Sacred Sword. Gets the KO on Arcanine. Archomp comes in. Uh, basically right now, he's got two Pokemon weak to Earthquake. Um, Copalion's got nothing to really do anything to Garchomp, Mega Garchomp, uh, mind you. Lucario doesn't got anything for Mega Archomp either. Uh, Meloetta, I believe, has Dazzling Gleam. Uh, if that kills Gar Mega Garchomp, I don't think so. But maybe with the chip, it might. So, uh, But right now, the game's pretty much sealed. I mean, he's got Hydreigon at 100%, Serperio at 100%, Urshifu at 100%, Galvantula um, still alive with... Uh, with its, it's able to outspeed... I mean, if he has Bullet Punch... Um, it won't outspeed that, but yeah, Mega Card and Drum comes in. I believe he's gonna seal the game away here. Yeah, Earthquake. Wait. Oh, Sticky Web. Right, I was like, why was Mega Card Chomp faster? Yeah, so this has definitely sealed the deal. Um, with the Sticky Web's up, Mega Card Chomp's just Earthquake and everything. Um, Basically, it should one-hit KO Lucario, and I don't know if it'll one-hit KO Meloetta, but we'll see. Not quite. 
yeah, Dazzling Gleam did nothing to Garchomp here. Yeah, so, uh, really, really well played game by Jeremy. Exactly what I expected. He just wants to click buttons. Um, that sticky webs, it, like, as soon as webs went up and, uh, John didn't really have a defogger, maybe the, um, Scizor, but I believe the Scizor was a setup set, like we've seen with the, um, with the iron defense. Um, game was pretty much sealed, uh, especially against a team of this potency. I mean, you had Urshifu with, uh, behind the webs, you had Superior behind the webs, Hydreigon behind the webs, Arcanine behind the webs, um, just... Yeah, a really, really tough match here for John. A tough loss. He takes minus five. Um, really good, good um, game by by Jeremy though. Um, as we've seen, the webs were just super important. So uh, you can see how easily Mega Garchomp can sweep a team if webs are up. Um, not to mention he had Urshifu, Superior, Hydra again sitting in the back. Uh, wild game. Like I said, Jeremy's games are going to be pretty exciting since they're super offensive. Um, but like I said, he needs to get that offense going with that sticky webs and as we've seen that was pretty important to this win So for the fifth match yeah, Fifth match we have uh, Richard and Jamie so two really good players Richard being flames 98765 and ginger gaming being Jamie so Jamie's team uh, one of my favorite teams the Kyurem just Wow, just a completely ridiculous, unstoppable dragon here with coverage for everything, so. <clears throat> Notably so, uh, he leads off of Kyurem, uh, knowing it really doesn't have any walls, uh, anything to wall it. Uh, it shouldn't. Um, if he has Ice Beam, Focus Blast, uh, or Earth Power, um, and Draco Meteor, I mean, he, or uh, Freeze Dry, I mean, he basically can deal with this entire team, so. Mesprey Trick Rooms going to outspeed the Kyurem now. Kyurem's going to do Kyurem things. Oh. Doing a stupid amount of damage. Oh, getting the freeze too. I don't like seeing freezes anymore. I got frozen too many times in my last draft. Yeah, so Kyurem just doing work like it normally does. Oh, Jesus. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I probably would have went into Flirtus there. Kyurem was super good in this match. You were able to Earth Power the Registeel. You were able to Ice Beam the Chestnut. Ice Beam the Altaria. Freeze Dry the Tapu Fini. And probably kill Mespri too with another Ice Beam. Huh. Very confused about that play. So he goes into to Ditto here. Uh, Registeel, I guess, to threaten the body press and scout what this Registeel has, what set it is. Um, a really underutilized tactic with Ditto is scouting sets, so. Body press. Chestnut's got the Rocky helmet. Um, okay, now he's setting up, uh, spikes. Or just, yeah, a good idea, Floor just should just attack, I mean... Okay, yeah. Registeel comes back in. Yeah, now he's now he's got a yeah. So this is okay. This is a point that I made in Jamie's analysis uh, that you guys will see tomorrow or the same day, which um, probably release both on the same day unless I release this later tonight. Um, but Jamie's team, you can't get too passive. Okay, I draft these type of teams all the time, and this happens to me all the time. Um, it drives me mental. But you play. And f notably, this happened to me with Florges since I drafted Florges as my captain uh, last draft. Florges was just setup fodder. Um, when I brought Florges as like a, a more defensive set like that, um, people just do stuff like that, just set up right in my face uh, or substitute, and um, it costed me a lot of games. So, uh, well, not a lot. It costed me like three games. So, um, I guess that's a lot. It's a lot in my head. But yeah. Jamie can't get too passive with his team. He wants to keep up the momentum on his team. Um, he wants to keep pressure, and that's why I was a little bit confused with the Kyurem uh, uh, drop there. So, uh, yeah. A really tough place here for, for Jamie right now. Um, really good position for Richard here. He totally took advantage of the, the floor just like he should. Uh, perfect play by, by Richard here. So he's got times two defense on this Registeel. And uh, Jamie's got no ghost type, 
Uh, body press is gonna slam Cloyster, it's gonna slam the, the Ditto that's gonna come in, it's gonna slam low punny, like, really tough position right now. Cloyster comes in, so okay, this is another thing. Getting that spikes up is gonna break all these focus sashes, if he had any. That body press comes in, destroys the Cloyster. Yeah, Jamie's, Jamie's really in a tough pickle right now. Um, so he goes into the Ditto to transform and threaten the body press back. Richard's very prepared in this match. He has Chobbleberry. Um, so I, I'm assuming he brought Chobbleberry for the low punny and then he could just body press the low punny back. Um, lo and behold, it worked out in a, in a, in a good way as well with the Registeel trying to body press back with, with the stat boost. So I don't know if he planned it like that, but really, yeah. When, J when Jamie hit the Registeel and the Chobbleberry came out, he was just probably like, Oh man, game's just getting worse and worse for me. Yeah, so he's going to do absolutely nothing to the Registeel. It does 18% and this Registeel is going to hit really hard now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that body press at 41%. Oh, and then Jamie gets a crit anyways. So, oh yeah, yeah. Um, So he switches out. Finny comes in. Kind of similar situation, except Finny can be a little bit more offensive since it's got water typing. Uh, and uh, Nature's Madness. So um, I think we'll see Nature's Madness right here. Yeah. So a perfect way to deal a damage to this freaking big wall, Florges. Esprit comes in. Oh, Florges heals up. So Richard might be having a little bit of trouble trying to deal with Florges, and then he's very prepared. Very, very prepared. So, uh, I don't know if Mespri gets taunt, but uh, he has Encore, which is very good as well. Um, he's forcing the floor just... He's forcing... Forcing Jamie to just synthesis until the taunt or the Encore runs out. Um, basically, he's forcing him into a passive position um, to, to make a switch or to, to ride this um, Encore out, which is going to allow Richard to come in. Um, and either do a lot of damage to this um, Fortis, set up some more spikes with Chestnut, and or um, come in with this Mega Altaria, so... Safely, mind you. Since right now this Fortis is only going to be using Synthesis. Yeah, so we see that the U-turn, the Altaria comes in. Definitely going to set up here. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, didn't set up, but Frustration comes out. Um, so he hard switched, right? Did he hard switch into... Yeah, okay, so he hard switches into the... Um... Zygarde. So what's weird here to me is... I don't think Frustration kills... Florges? If it's defensive Florges, which most, of, most Florges are. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure frustration is the exact same amount of damage. Yeah, so frustration is the exact same amount of damage. So Lord just does 74 to 88 with Moonblast. Instead, he and sacked Zygarde. I mean, Zygarde wasn't super good in the rest of this match since walled by that. Um, I mean, it could deal with Mespri, but yeah, walled by Chestnut and Vinny. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I definitely would have just Moonblasted here. It's at 100%. Um, had a chance that it would have been a two-hit KO. Had a teeny tiny chance. Um, yeah, because he, he could have... Uh, Jeez, yeah, he could he could have he could have been able to deal with this. So if he moon blasted the Altaria, uh, regular Altaria, it definitely would have killed uh, the Mega Altaria, or it, it would have been very close. Basically, it's still super effective hitting. It's still doing a ton of damage. Um, if it did 77 to 88 or 74 to 88, uh, then he comes in with Zygarde, 10. percent I don't know what it is. Let's just say it's not cho Choice Bandit, okay? For for uh, giggles here. Okay. Not Choice Bandit. It does 39 to 46. 
if it's choice banded, that's with thousand arrows. So he wouldn't have been able to get rid of this uh, Mega Altaria. Um, yeah, very interesting. He comes in, he, he forcibly sacks the Zygarde here, yeah. It, um, if I if I'm missing something in the in the read here, uh, please tell me. I I really think that yeah, Blood just could have been in. Uh, yeah, Richard's just gonna keep attacking here. I mean, uh, Jamie's just giving him Pokemon at this at this point right now. So he comes in. Um, Ditto comes in and Choice Scarfed. It's gonna be able to KO this Altaria. Okay, yeah. So. When I was watching the match, I was a little bit confused, and then I, and then I realized this is why people run run, run frustration over return. Um, Showdown automatically puts your happiness at 255. So if you run frustration uh, and somebody like a Ditto uh, transforms, scarfed, and it's gonna revenge kill you, uh, it's gonna do 1% damage because your happiness is at 255. So uh, just yeah, I. I very, very impressed by Richard here. He's just just prepared in every avenue, so. Yeah. So now that Altaria is faster than uh, the low punny, obviously Fake Out's still gonna hurt. Yeah, so even a boosted uh, Altaria's frustration wasn't able to kill the Florida. So Florida definitely should have stayed in a couple turns ago and just Moonblasted as much as he could. Since Moonblast is gonna hurt Altaria, Chestnut, and do a lot of damage to Mespri, not a lot to but definitely still get some chip on Finny. So at this point, it's pretty much game. Uh, Ditto cannot do a thing to this Altaria. Um, and it's going to outspeed the low punny. Yeah. So that's a GG. These guys played really good. They're both really strong opponents. A um, little bit confused about a couple plays that Jamie made. Um, just, just uh, refresh my memory or you know refresh my mind if I'm missing something but yeah I definitely think this could have been closer but Richard played masterfully um, he was just prepared at every point of the game um, you know the Choppleberry on Registeel the Encore on Mespri the frustration on Altaria really really spectacular prep so I look forward to seeing both these guys matches later on in the draft though and we're almost done here. We have three more matches. <clears throat> we're at an hour and 12 minutes. My mouth's starting to get dry. So we have Matt, uh, which is Electric Ratman. And we have Shogi. Uh, please correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Shogi is Showtime here, Showtime 303. Um, so this was a match that I was curious about too since Matt also has rain I like to see how rain performs in other drafts since the drafts that I perform in their metas have really developed now So and their players are really developed in them. So um, Very curious to see how this uh, how rain develops in a a, a newly born uh, draft and newly born meta. So yeah, um, so for leads here If uh, if Matt leads Politoed and uh, Shogi leads Hippodon here, Hippodon gets the sand up, I believe, because it's slower. Um, so I don't really like that lead. I kind of like the Beresquita lead um, since it's going to be able to flip turn on anything here uh, and get a really nice chunk of damage off. And Matt can, can Matt can make kind of a safe offensive play like that. Um, as for Shogi. Um, I mean, you probably just lead the the, uh, the nine tails, really. Um, the only worry is the Mega Diancie leading, uh, but you freeze dry the Manaphy, you freeze dry the Polydode, you freeze dry the uh, Beresquita. Um, I think you can also do that with Pile of Swine. No, thick fat. Yeah. What was I thinking? Pile of Swine is thick fat. Um, but yeah, you could get Veil, veil Up on the Pile of Swine, um, if you had that. Um, other than that, interested to see what typing the Silvali is, since, uh, Shogi drafted Silvali all, so that means he gets all types. It costed a lot, but he gets all types of Silvali. 
Um, definitely don't see him lead leading the Drake Assault or the Gallade or the Thunderous since those are definitely offensive win cons here, so uh, depending how the match develops. But yeah, I think Bear Scuda and I think Ninetales. He leads Hippodon, he leads Bear Scuda. Matt made a really good uh, lead there. Flip turns, gets nice chip on the Hippodon. So, very, very, uh, uh, good play by Shoki. Um, yeah, I like the flip turn. That's definitely what I would have done. Um, it's too bad he didn't liquidation, though. So, yeah, uh, the slack off's gonna recover all that chip that he just got. So, interesting to note, uh, if you guys notice, Hippodon didn't recover any from leftovers, so he's probably got a smooth rock on or something else. Um, hopefully, Matt's aware of that. Matt comes in, brings Politoed um, in on the flip turn, gets the rain up, and then uh, Shogi brings Ninetales in to reset the weather to ice. Um, making sure. Oh, wow. Wow, that did a lot. Holy shit. Okay, it's Life Orb Politoed. Wow, that did a lot. So he sets up Veil, so this is the start of Shogi's offense, gets a Toxic on the Palaswine, a great play since the only thing he really had to deal with Palaswine was Glade. Um, oh, I think, I think this is, I think Grass is still super effective here. So this is still Volley Grass, yeah, so this is, this is gonna hurt, this is a big issue for Matt's team right now, that still Volley Grass uh, deals with Diancy, Manaphy, Beriskuta, Palaswine. Uh, and Polito. That's hitting five Pokemon super effectively. Holy mama. Yeah, so it just... Okay. So, Matt sacking the Polito right away there. Um, I definitely probably would have went into Bronzong because I feel like the Polito was more important. Bronzong, definitely important. Um, deals with Hippodon. Deals with Drake Assault to some extent. Um, it deals with Thunderous to some extent. Deals with Glade to some extent. But the Politoed, he needs it for his offense to be really, really potent. So, especially with the Manaphy and Barrascuda. Barrascuda comes in. Um, unfortunately, Shogi has Veil up and he's got a Grass type. Even even if this is an Ice Fang, it's definitely not going to be able to KO the Silvali. Super bulky, 95 stats all the way through. Plus Veil up, so. Close combats, gets a crit. So, Shogi is probably like, fuck me. Right, um, since since the Silvali Grass was just like it was ready to sweep. I mean, he had so many ways, uh, so many things he could have hit with multi attack. 120 base Grass attack. Move. Only only thing that's gonna be walled by is that Bronzong. Bronzong comes in. Thundee T comes in. Really really cool uh, tech here using Weather Ball with dual Weather and against that in his own rain. Weatherball's just gonna clean up some kills here. Diancy comes in. Shogi's vert, uh, forced to switch here. Uh, he Diamond Storms, yep. Hippodon eats it up for dinner since Hippodon's like super bulky in both uh, defense and special defense. High Earthquake smacked Barrascuda. So if this isn't bad, he just Ice Fangs. Yeah, not much he could do. Uh, Drake results out in the sand now. Uh, pretty tough play. I mean, you could have maybe switched into Diancy there. Um, and kind of saved your Barrascuda until the sand ran out. But really tough position that he's in right now. Uh, he's lost his, his offensive rain setter. Uh, he lost Palaswine, which was his biggest defensive option for this Drake result. I think he really... I think the most important Pokemon he needed to keep in this match were uh, Piloswine, Politoed, Barrascuda. Um, these things were going to do a ton of damage. They outsped Shogi's team without uh, Weather Up, so um, definitely the three Pokemon I, I would have kept, or at least at least uh, try my best to keep. So Diancy comes in. The Bolt Beak doesn't kill. Diancy should kill. Yep. Okay, so that's that's a scarf thunderous tea. Yeah. So nine tails comes in, sets up another veil. Toxic freeze dry. Thunder T just comes in behind screens. Uh, Matt goes for last ditch effort, last ditch effort on the tail glow, um, but that volt switch just from you know Thunder T 
just absolutely monstrous special attack. Uh, Shogi pulls out the win here with that dual weather. Um, very interesting tech uh, with the dual weather, but he played really well. Um, Matt didn't play bad either. I, he just needed to uh, really, um, what's the word? Recognize his win cons and his defensive, uh, his like defensive captains really. Um, Piloswine being the like only thing that just completely walls the Drake result. Um, definitely would have made sure that I was keeping that. And then Politoed to make sure Bear Scuda uh, is really slamming people hard with Flip Turn and Liquidation to start chipping. And then hopefully later in the match you have um, <clears throat> Mega Diancie or uh, uh, Manaphy sweep a team. So Or or even Bear Scuda, depending how much chip he's got on the rest of the team. So uh, really good game. Uh, definitely can see Matt turning it around since he's got rain and he... Uh, he just kind of had a, a hard matchup here with that dual weather on uh, Shogi. Um, and I'm interested to see how Shogi does later on with dual weather <clears throat> and the uh, weather ball Thundee T. Next up we have... Um, oh, this is the last one. That was sweet. Uh, the match just got played today. So we have Siraj, uh, which is Siraj Dam, and uh, Blade, which is Trainer Willy. So, um, I haven't seen Siraj play for quite a while. I remember Siraj was pretty good, but he's a doubles player, so he's probably trying to get used to some single stuff. Um, Blade here, he's he's been in another draft that I'm in. He's definitely improving. Uh, his draft in this one was, was a lot better than, I believe, his last draft that I played with him. So, uh, it seems like he has a little bit of a plan going. And he's got some really good defensive options here, so... Uh, a lot of defense, actually. You got Talk Specs, you got Santa Connor, you got Orbital, you got Slow, uh, Slow Bro uh, Galarian, and you got Decidueye. So, uh, let's see, they lead Talk Specs to Carbink. A Carbink goes straight for Iron Defense. Uh, oh, uh, this is going to be a big problem if. Okay, Toxics. It's going too fast, sorry. I was trying to say that's going to be a big problem if uh, Blade didn't have any. Uh, anything to deal with that because oh he has he has ghost type so it don't matter it don't matter uh right now i guess dog spikes doesn't really care too much about the body press he, he can definitely get two spikes up and then switch out with regenerator into decidueye um right now uh basically the best thing siraj can do is either switch out or um i guess play it out um i'm not sure what the rest of his moves are so he got rocks up which is good Yeah, so he goes into the Sidui, which is what I figured he would do. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so he's got Body Press. Definitely can't do anything since it's Ghost Type. He knocks off Heavy Duty Boots. Okay, so his last move was Toxic. Pretty obnoxious. Um, he got the Toxic off, toxic off on Decidui. Um Blade definitely doesn't want to lose Decidui here because it's his only way to stop this Body Press. Um, Siraj just decides to play it out and just martyr the, um, the Carbink here. This Carbink goes down, unfortunately. Um, Cinderor comes in. Cinderor has a Lumberry, heals the Toxic. Acrobatics, um, really good, really good call for that Decidueye there. Um, although knockoff would have completely obliterated it and it's stab. Um, knockoff also would deal with Orbeetle. So not sure uh, how I feel about the acrobatics, but anyways, he parting shots out uh, on the Tox Specs. Hopefully bring an offensive threat. Yeah, Coco comes out to deal with this uh, Tox Specs. Probably see a thunder here, a thunderbolt here. Should switch into Santa Conda. Oh, oh. Okay. Really good play there by Blade. He's scouting, seeing what uh, Siraj wants to do. Gets a little extra chip on Toxic. Um, Siraj made a great play. He was very aware that Blade uh, was uh, checked him there and was scouting. Um, knew that he wanted to go into the Santa Conda to. Uh, to, to immune that electric. Um, Siraj goes for that Grass Knot, which is awesome. Um, gets massive damage on this Sandaconda. Only issue is he's taking a lot of Toxic Chip at this point. 
Um, he probably needs to get... Oh, and he got hit by the Rocky Helmet. Right, because Grassnaut Grass and Draining Kiss both, both touch, so... Yeah. So he gets rid of the Sandakana here. Basically at the cost... Yeah. At the cost of his Tapu Koko. The Sand Damage, the... The recoil and the toxic damage I uh, was able to take out the uh, was able to take out the Tapu Koko. Sorry, I was looking there. I was kind of confused why Ampharos wasn't poisoned yet. So Ampharos comes in, turns into Mega Ampharos. Orbital comes in. Orbital screens on Orbital. Wow, that power gym did nothing. Uh, that screens and Orbital super bulky. Oh, sorry guys. <clears throat> yeah, so Orbito's just going to recover up, let Aphros take that toxic damage off. Um, Blade came really prepared here. Uh, so if we go up. Yeah, Blade's just, Bla Blade's, Blade knew what he wanted to do this match. Set up toxic spikes, um, you know, protect screens, just live out Siraj's team. Or outlive Siraj's team right now. Siraj desperately trying to <laughs> deal with this Orbital. Gets the Para, which is nice. Sand is gone, which is nice. Um, really just trying to chip this Orbital down. Orbital's just going to keep recovering. Aphros is going to, you know, uh, go down to this Toxic, right? So... <laughs> Orbito's got both screens up now for Blade. Siraj sends out a uh, Grimstone. Let's see what he does. Set up screens himself. Yeah, Orbito's going to U-turn out into something a little bit more offensive. Ooh, that was cool. Um, so Siraj has Eject Button on Grimstone, so um, he got a little bit better uh, momentum there than Blade. Probably caught Blade off guard a little bit. Blade was probably wanting to go into, um, uh, you know, either uh, Toxpex or I guess Slowbro G covers both Shaman and Grimmsnarl. So he's probably going to go into uh, Slowbro G here. Siraj Tailwinds. Oh, wait. That's an interesting uh, tech I didn't know. So if you go to U turn. And you hit eject button and it switches you out so you get a free switch the opponent doesn't get the u-turn very interesting siraj knew that that was really cool tech um so yeah now now siraj is kind of in the driver's seat a bit those toxic spikes are really really starting to add up though um let's see how he deals with the the, the ore beetle here with um Chayman. So he switches out onto the Cineroar. he needs to force this ore beetle out because it's just it's Taking, taking up too much passive damage on Siraj here. Octillery comes in, gets that U-turn off finally. Siraj fakes, fake outs. It's Octillery behind screens, a little bit of a problem. Mm. So Incinero is surprisingly faster than Octillery, gets the parting shot off, allows Shaman to come in a little bit safer. Unfortunately, uh, Siraj gets crit again by Surf, so um, but he still got one turn of Tailwind. Um, yeah, unfortunate that Shaman uh, got crit, and now the Toxics is really adding up. Gets a Seed Flare, gets the Spadef drop. Finally gets rid of this Ore Beetle. Things are turning around, but this problem the problem is, is this Toxic. Uh, this, this, these toxic spikes have been hell for Siraj. Larian Slowbo comes in. He needs to switch out Shaman. Goes into Grimmsnarl, which is still weak to the Slowbro G. Gr uh, Slowbro sets up. Oh, this is real bad for um, real bad for Siraj right now. Sets up the Reflect. Shell Sidearm definitely one hit KOs this Grimmsnarl. So an interesting thing about Shell Sidearm, it hits whatever is going to do more damage, so the Reflect doesn't matter too much. I believe that's how that works. So you fake outs. Slowbro eats. Very interesting tech here. I've never even heard of that berry. 
So I'm assuming it's if you get flinch, you get a, a defense boost. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm gonna check that out later, but really interesting. Now this is a plus one defense, plus one spadef, plus one special attack slowbro. Uh, really scary. Siraj is in a really tough position right now. Uh, really hard to say that he could win this match. Toxic spikes have just absolutely torn apart his team. So Shell Sidearm ends up KOing the Incineroar here. Definitely going to kill the uh, Shaman here as well. Yeah, so tough match for Siraj here. Um, those Toxic Spikes were just devastating. Um, he clearly didn't think about it when he was prepping. Uh, for, he needed a Defogger. Um, Blade setting up those toxic spikes was basically spelling demise for Siraj um, if he didn't have defog on Coco. Not sure what that last move slot was on it, but if it didn't have defog, um, the match was sealed with those toxic spikes really. He would have had to play expertly, like perfectly, no mistakes, um, since, you know, Blade had a really, really defensive team here uh, to play around those toxic spikes, so. And Blade playing really good, uh, definitely see a lot of improvement here. He came in with a plan, which is awesome. Uh, toxic Spikes, he had Protect, he had Recovery, and Baneful, Baneful Bunker. So, uh, you know, really, really good, really good match here. Um, you can definitely see what Blade's wanting to do with his team, though. Spikes and Stall, oh yeah. Oh, no, he, but for real, he set up the Slowbro G here, which is a really potent Pokemon. I don't know why this isn't used more. Shell Sidearm is completely broken. Um, if you really want to do talk about it too, Quick Draw is fucking, oops, sorry, uh, is ridiculous as well. Um, quick Quick Draw with Click Claw, uh, you just, uh, what do you do about that? You can't poison him. The best you, thing you could think about doing is Roar or Whirlwind, and a lot of people don't think about that when they're drafting. So, good game by Blade here. Uh, Siraj, definitely you're going to make a comeback, I know you will. Um, you definitely won't make that mistake again. Uh, I'm sure you won't, so... Uh, guys, week one matches are complete. It's only Wednesday. This is phenomenal. Uh, super happy about that. Um, Lucas is going to drop a uh, poll in the Facebook group in PBR, which there's a link below for that. Um, vote on your match of the week, and uh, we may release a video um, this week about uh, that match of the week. Me and Lucas will talk about it. Um, maybe I'll have a couple other people come in and talk about it as well. Not sure how we'll do that, but yeah, vote on your match, uh, what you think the match of the week is, and uh, let me let me know what your guys' thoughts are on some of the matches here. Uh, what was your favorite match? Um, what was your favorite part? So yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys next week, uh, full eight matches, and uh, we'll give you guys another match review.